Okay, first, let me give you a quick disclaimer. I'm in no way, shape or form a pianist. I have zero interest of becoming one. I'm very much a 21st century producer and I like to use the tools that are provided to me in the technology like Ableton, FL Studio, Logic, the tools that allow me to be able to still create music without actually having to go through the hassle of becoming a music theory expert. So techniques like I'm going to show you today allow you to still jam out on your keyboard and your MIDI controller, whatever it is, but you don't have to know specific chords, you don't have to spend the years learning on top of learning the door, learning music theory and how to play the keys. So I've actually done a synthesis video, a full tutorial within the Academy, but for your guys on YouTube's benefit, let me just give you a quick overview. There are two main types of the synthesis. There's FM synthesis and there is subtractive synthesis. Essentially, both end up doing the same thing, making sound. However, they just work slightly differently. With FM synthesis, I tend to use that on quick stabs, on bass lines, or any sort of sharp sound that I need. Whereas with subtractive synthesis, I tend to use that for the long drawn out pads, drones, or nice classic chord sounds. Now, the reason for telling you this now at the start of the video is because I'm not actually going to show you how the sounds that I'm using are specifically made as in terms of sound design. I'm saving that for people inside the academy. However, whether it's with me or not, do look into having a basic knowledge of what FM synthesis is and subtractive synthesis. In the long run, it's really going to help you out. So without further ado, let's jump into Ableton and let's have a look what I'm talking about. Okay, so I've been working on this loop today um, and I've got it to the point where I'm nearly ready to arrange. There's a lot of elements in it. The mix is nice and full, but there's always one thing that I'm going to check before moving into the arrangement and, and that's creating a break to see what the drop is like. Now, if we have a little play through the track. As you can hear, it's it's grooving. However, I feel like the rhythm of that track will get boring over time. And what, what I do know from experience is that when we start arranging the track, it's super easy to start getting bored. So what I have here is a sound, a little chord sound. It's nice and simple. It's just a, a chord that we've got out of a synth. Now I've dragged it into a simpler. What I could do is I could just play a melody with this as the track's playing. And we would have something interesting, but it would take a lot of processing afterwards. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna manipulate it within the simpler. What we could do as we were going up the keyboard then, as you can hear, we start losing some of the traditional sound from that synth. What we want to do is retain as much of the original sound as we get down here. So we can warp it and change it to complex. And it retains a bit of its sound. However, it's still not that great. So instead, what I'm going to do is slice it. And if it's not already, change it to gate so that when you lift your finger off the keyboard, it then also stops playing. If you have it on trigger when you press the keyboard, it will play that whole sample, which we don't want to happen. So, and now we could play a melody that's much more interesting. As you can hear, it's much more interesting, but we want to go one step further here. What I'm going to do is drag out an LFO because we want to start giving this even more pitches to play with. So I drag out the LFO and then we're going to use the inbuilt EQ within the simpler. So I'm going to map it to that frequency and then go into open up the controls so we can see what's going on, apply a bit of resonance and we want that to stop going so deep there. So we 
around the 1k is where we usually as you can hear we're starting to get much more interesting <laughs> So I'm just going to turn off the one of the synths. Yeah. And now we can play it and really hear what's going on. But the next step we want to do is add some delay. So I wanted this to give the break a bit of interest. So going to take the delay and I'm going to leave it on three, the standard setting, but I'm only going to echo off the highs. Now we get something interesting again. Pull the dry wet now. As you can hear, super simple to play a melody, really, really simple to play it. And it feels you're getting the rhythm from your brain out into the keyboard. However, it's not that hard to create nice sounds. So let's try that again, but with a Rhodes pattern. So as you can see, this Rhodes has exactly the same process. If I start playing keys on my keyboard, we can start getting a really nice melody. And again, just to re remind you, this will start in the main break. It won't start before. So let's start playing a melody now. It feels like you're a pianist when you're not. And just like that, we've got a really nice melody, something that's going to keep the track super interesting just by manipulating a sound that we've got out of a synth. This could be a sample. This could be a sound that you've actually recorded out yourself. It could be whatever you want. The key here is to just make sure that you're manipulating the sound in the way of showing you within Simpler and you're going to get a really nice effect. You're going to take something boring and make not only the track interesting, but the sound interesting too. So guys, as you can see, it's super, super easy to make the break interesting. As I said, it's a lot, a lot of people get stuck on the arrangement because they go into the arrangement and they can't figure out what to add or what to remove or how to arrange it so that it stays interesting over time. Remember, just 
Giving the listener something new to catch on to, it's always going to make the track sound really professional and developed. Um, it can be something as simple as what I've just done there. Remember, if you like these tutorials, please check out the link to the Academy in the description. That's where my time and energy goes into and I've, it's been proven to take people from absolute beginner all the way through to, well, as I've just released this week, someone's got number two on Beatport. So it's proven to be successful. Thanks everyone for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.